we had a topic that we can all agree on, and that is that our children must be safe in cyberspace. Um, and it's no longer a virtual world. As uh, any of us who are parents know, we know this is no longer virtual. It's the very real world in which that our children live. Um, so our recommendations were both very global and also very local. Um, one of the first recommendations that we all agreed on was that all nations must adopt as, as soon as possible minimal legal protections. And I'll give you some examples in a moment. We must improve the cooperation globally across all borders um, of our law enforcement agencies. Interpol, ICMIC, there are some really good examples that we can build on. There must be more coordination between public, private, government, and media regarding something you all have already suggested, more empowerment, awareness, and education. And yes, there is definitely not just a digital divide, but a generation divide, a generation gap about what kids are doing online and what we as adults think that they are doing online. And then we must leverage all the great work that is already being done out there from curriculum to best practices, and then of course funding. But let me get to the specific legal recommendation, and that would be the absence or inconsistent nature of child exploitation laws present significant challenges to law enforcement. EWI will promote legislation in all nations, beginning with the definition of a minor or a person being defined as under 18 years of age. Secondly, we also suggested uh, that EWI support improved anti-money laundering capabilities as an effective means of attacking the profitable nature of online child exploitation. Um, there were some recommendations regarding something that earlier people have discussed, and that was um, some type of standard, for instance, a good housekeeping uh, seal of approval, as we call it in the U.S. And then, of course, we didn't want to leave out the private sector. We need usable privacy and security settings, so making those features m both, both more usable for kids and parents and to help them avoid a range of harms from damaged reputations to the systems that are covertly being used for cybercrime and other attacks. We also have some specific recommendations about the um, London event and specifically the inclusion of youth, teens, and even younger children in the event. Um, EWI can certainly be the nexus of all of this. If you think about a Venn diagram and draw circles of education, commerce, health, welfare, and safety for our very youngest digizens, I think that's where EWI can be, the broker of the best of the broke, uh, best of the best. Um, our kids will become the teachers, the doctors, the engineers, the innovators, the investors of tomorrow. And so this is for all of the world's children. Thank you. Wow. Deborah, I couldn't write fast enough, so um, I'm sure John's in the same boat. John, could you comment? So, so first of all, I, it's hard to uh, follow that up, actually, with any comments. Um, but uh, the, the thing that I think is very interesting, and you called it out, was you, you took a place uh, and a turn, essentially, which is one that every nation in this room has in common. Um, and in fact, I would, uh, I would be willing to even suggest essentially can come to faster conclusions about than many other of the aspects that we work on, and you had called that out as well. The, the technology uh, discussion, I took two pieces of this. The first was, I, I think it is actually an interesting point um, that for all the efforts that we have here, we as adults are contemplating. We don't have kids talking to us about what might be the solutions we're starting to develop today here in Dallas. Uh, and, and I took that to heart because that might actually be a key missing element in, in the overall work. The second part about uh, usable products, my, my sense might very much be the case that that's exactly what the kids are going to have to teach us, as to what they would use, um, so that as they grow into adults, they get used to using it. Uh, all of us grew up probably in an era, at least I did, I know you're all younger than I am, um, in which you know seat belts were not mandatory, but yet when they were mandatory, all of a sudden, my kids just think of seat belts as mandatory because they grew up with it and they got used to it. So what can we start now, essentially, that becomes something that's very much uh, the next generation's used to it, uh, and the only way to probably do that is to ask them. So it, it was a great point. Kamlesh. 
I think it's a very interesting uh, set of recommendations, of course, uh, very wide. I don't know how much of that is actually implementable and uh, how long will it take. But then no amount of education uh, is enough. Although keeping in uh, view Bruce's comment yesterday uh, that this generation has to teach us what it is uh, to really use the internet, what they expect of it. But at the same time, I think the security issues and privacy issues is something that we have to drill it down them, really. They should understand that what they write, everything is permanently captured. So security and uh, privacy, these are the issues that we need to build in. And uh, as John gave the example of uh, the seat belt, they will have to be educated on this. So I would like to personally support uh, essentially the recommendations on uh, coordination, uh, public-private partnership in terms of creating education programs, schools to be consulted with this, uh, teachers and so on, and parents have to be drawn into this uh, entire process. As a mom of a nine and 10 year old boys, um, I, I was struck by, uh, we do all have a shared interest of our kids and um, they should be treated as a critical resource for all of our countries. And I'm not sure if we really think about them that way. The, and we can't afford that digital divide with our children. And as my kids would tell me, mommy, Wi-Fi is not the internet. And I insist that Wi-Fi really is the internet. Um, EWI is a very much a family-friendly uh, oriented organization. So John Rose, I'm sure Alexander and Justin would love to come to London next spring and uh, they could teach us a thing or two about the technology that we're looking at. And I think that we should turn to our children as the innovators of the technology because uh, I think they can help us understand how to design the next generation systems. So thanks, Deborah. Um, we're gonna move on to transportation and uh, Joanne Os Osofsky, I'm gonna spell it, say it wrong, um, is gonna give us the presentation from her team. Thank you very much. So on the transportation sector, um, as you all I'm sure would agree, you know, transportation systems and infrastructure is critical infrastructure. Our team uh, really focused predominantly on um, commerce and safety, uh, those two influences, of course, uh, commerce being uh, um, critical to all of our economies and safety of our citizens and, of course, our own uh, transportation workers. Um, in transportation, like other businesses, of course, the delivery of transportation services, there's a growing dependency on the internet, both internally and externally, uh, in order to facilitate the movement of people and goods and so on. So even internally, you look at things nowadays like voice over IP, unified communications, um, things that we do internally to transact business, as well as from a commerce perspective, there's certainly growing dependency on self-service. So if you think of you know, going to the bank, we bank on the internet now. You know, you don't have tellers like we used to. Um, if you want to check in for your flight, you've got a kiosk or you can do it on your, your handheld device or your PC. You know, we buy book and status on the web anymore. So if there was an outage, if there was a crisis, um, that would have certainly some uh, big impact to us in, in our field. So in terms of um, what the ahas were and the areas that we focused on, certainly um, in our world, criticality of our control systems is very important. If you think about uh, a locomotive or an airplane, they are mobile data centers. If you think about it from a train control, air traffic control perspective, there's an incredible amount of technology that's now on an airplane in a cockpit or, or in a locomotive. And while we have uh, in our industry, we mitigate that pretty well internally. You know, we have primary systems, secondary systems, and tertiary systems in train control, but and, or control systems, but obviously that is a, a critical part of the infrastructure. Another area that we spent uh, quite a bit of time on is, um, you know, from as human beings, as we travel from foreign country to foreign country, you wouldn't travel from foreign country to foreign country without a passport. You know, that would be unthinkable, but yet there's no passport for cyberspace. And of course, that impacts us greatly because we rely upon the availability of our systems and uh, the internet and so on. So um, edge device and user controls that can cause, you know, or lack thereof that can cause denial of service and 